Welcome back, and Dr. H.S. Kanku is joining us via Zoom as well. And we're continuing our political conversation ahead of the NPP parliamentary primaries this weekend. Good morning, Doc. Thank you for joining us. Hi, good morning. Thanks for having me. All right, and I hope you're doing well. Now, my first question would be that, you know, um, we're getting ready for the primaries. We're also getting ready for the national elections. The EC is preparing to compile the voters' register. NIA has started sharing cards as well. And so it's given an indication, maybe, that everything is okay amidst the coronavirus pandemic. Could this not send a wrong signal to everybody else that everything is okay, even though our numbers are soaring? Um, so this question is actually too, too is Janus face, it's too face. Mm. Um, you asked me a public health question about whether everything is okay as far as COVID-19 is concerned. Um, and then there is another part of it where you are talking about the elections that are coming up. I am not able to speak to the public health dimension of it, but um, like you've alluded to, um, it looks like the EC is very, very much bent on or determined to, to do these elections, um, would not have anything to the contrary. And so the political parties for now are engaging in uh, politicking or campaigning mm -hmm. um, as best as they know. Um, in anticipation of, of the election. So for now, for now, for now, it looks like that really is what it is. The, yeah. the, the thing though, when my area as a political communication analyst then is, how do the political parties engage in communication or engage in campaigning? Campaigning, absolutely. Politics? Yes, um, within this particular context. And I mean, were you going to say something or I can go on? Well, I was going to ask the same question, that then how do they go ahead to campaign? And, you know, if they don't get the opportunity to do the on-ground campaign like they used to in the past, how is this going to affect elections? Uh, very good. Um, so there are a couple of things that can happen. Um, you see, the key thing is to always keep the big picture and the fundamentals in mind. And what are the fundamental principles of democracy? What are the fundamental principles of elections? It's always back to the basics. Never ever to forget about that. That is participation. That is increase in political knowledge, improvement in political culture. That is access or opportunities to have access. That is um, um, universal suffrage, giving each and everybody a fair means of participation in the electoral process. And then there is also the, the opportunity for people to actually uh, share their opinions, engage in debates, and also other opportunities to then hear from the political actors themselves. They have that duty to tell us what it is that they expect to do for the nation. They have that responsibility to lay out a vision, a manifesto, and they do have that responsibility to make sure that they are communicating this in the clearest terms as possible so that citizens can be emboldened or can be given that political knowledge to make very intelligible or intelligent decisions when it comes to election day. And so that really is where communication media and all of these things take place. Now to go directly to the question, several things that can be done in order to enhance political knowledge. We go to the online system. And I, I must say that social media and online is going to play a whole big role, or is actually playing a big role in ways that we've not seen in, in, in a long time, or in ways that we might not have seen if everything was usual. The rallies are no more. They've been moved online. The town hall meetings um, might not be able to come on, although they are fantastic opportunities to engage with the constituents and to hear directly from them. But there is such a thing called an online town hall. There is such a thing called a Twitter town hall. There's such a thing called the YouTube town hall. And so we do expect that the parties will tap into these resources to be able to engage the citizens and hear directly from them instead of quantificating or projecting their own, I mean, their own um, views on us. There's got to be that horizontal instead of top-down communications. got to be very, very engaging. It's because deliberation is a very key tenet of democracy. So we do expect that they, they would engage in very innovative, they would try to um, engage in very innovative ways to make sure that they do not undermine the core principles and expectations of what an election or a democratic election should be. 
the um, so if you look at the two parties, I mean, they've been doing their own thing. And um, but 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 for now, there, there could even be online rallies. There could be online chats. Um, there, there could even be f- uh, Facebook live events, and, and John Mahama has done this, um, utilized this pretty effectively, I, I, I must say, so far. And then there could be a very limited engagement. We would not see the kind of door-to-door, or we might not see the kind of big, uh, uh, bold rallies that we, 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 we expect. But if you realize, um, you can do this on a limited basis. Remember when the lockdown or, um, was on? Um, there was this whole thing about the <laughs> the, 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 the food, the, the politics of food distribution. Food, yeah. Where the opportunity to still go out there and share food among the citizens, that's opposition. Uh-huh. The incumbent government also had their own thing that they were doing. They came with big trucks and the crowds were there and they were distributing the food. Um, so we can get into the details of what it is, but of retail course. politics, retail politics can still be, be, be achieved in a very innovative way because what is retail politics? That is engaging the citizens, uh-huh. engaging the constituents, listening to them, listening to their concerns and addressing them. But look, at the same time, have- will we not be cutting out people who may not be privy to technological advancements? That's on one side because not everybody can get access to Instagram, Twitter, to join in the rallies and all of that. We're talking about the people in the hinterlands who may not have access. And at the same time, how do we also take advantage of technological advancement, um, you know, to involve that in the elections? Because we could start with voting by proxy uh, in most cases so that we can also address the issue of social distancing and reducing the number of people that would gather at one point. Uh, Very good point. And that is why the apostles of internet diffusion the people who care about the digital divide. This has been their core, um, um, their, their, their core advocacy for so long that it's very, very important that the, the digital divide does not happen across income, does not happen across um, status, or does not happen across um, 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 so, social demographics, that the internet penetration needs to be addressed. I mean, you're right. The, the demographic differences are there between the rural and the ever, between sometimes the educated and not, the not so much educated. Mm. I mean, and across different levels, we all know about the, how expensive data is. And that also, I mean, uh, features into other things when it comes to communication, when it comes to cost of internet data, and when it comes to the telecom set, I mean, just yeah. a whole lot to be addressed. For. So this is where we begin to see the effect of those things. So, so you're perfectly right um, as far as that is concerned. And that is why we need to, I mean, be adapt. I think that's the key word. Uh, the political parties need to adapt. The electoral commission needs to adapt. We, as the citizens, also have a, a, a role to play. Absolutely. We also need to adapt. Yes, okay. and, and be innovative to access this kind of information. Okay. So that we are, I mean, uh, active participants in the electoral process and that some people are not cut off from, from this whole exercise. All right. Thank you so much. This is all time will allow. I wish we could have had a longer conversation, but I'm sure this can happen again uh, before the primaries on Saturday. And so thank you, Dr. Echesika Anku, and he is a political lecturer at GIJ, and he's been speaking to us about what measures we can put in place to ensure that everybody gets to participate um, in the national elections. Now, at 9.30, we'll have the press briefing by the Ministry of Information to update us on the situation at hand uh, with concerns to COVID-19. But at the moment, Ms. G is coming your way and she's having a discussion with some industry persons about Ghanaians who have been stranded abroad.